sections of the Quarteron de la Nouvelle Orléans, um, a work by Sidonie de la Bousset. Um, and we are very happy um, and appreciative with the participation of our readers. Um, um, a Dr. Um, Ouida Belousif, and also um, Dr. Alma Simonet. Thank you very much for your work and your help in this defense. Um, now I will um, hand over the floor to um, Brandy so that she can give an introduction. Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Thank you for coming. Um, I was, as you know, very excited to do this project. It had, you know, elements of a melodrama. Um, from a, from a language perspective with French, is written in 19th century French. Um, also, the book takes place in Louisiana, so you can kind of see the anglicisms in the French, and they're just particular anyway. Um, as I touched upon in my preface, I was looking for a story that had a black women protagonists, and at the beginning of the project, that's what I thought I had. <laughs> and as I progressed, I soon began to wonder if they considered themselves back th black, they being the quadrums, whether they considered themselves black. And it actually took me back to when I used to live in Paris, where I had a little mini identity crisis. Um, of course, race is viewed differently in the States than it is elsewhere in the world. And, you know, occasionally I got the question, you know, are you mixed? But in the States, that's understood as half and half if you are biracial. But when I got to France, I had people tell me you're not black. And I'm like, well, I've been black my whole life. I don't know what you're talking about. And it's like, no, you know, um, look at your features, your, your skin, your hair, da da da. You know, you're not black. And then it, it really brings up the conversation of who, who gets to say they're fully black? How do you define that? Um, so, in the case of the, the quadrons, it, it was quite interesting. I would hope at least they consider themselves women of color, and if they didn't, I would be there to <laughs> scold them about that. Um, again, you know, despite America's one drop rule, which immediately, cla which automatically classified you as black, um, their place in society was was fascinating, and it it, it confused people. Honestly, it confused people. Um, It, it confused them to the point where even in the language that we see um, addressing them, it's, they go from praising their beauty to, oh, they're a common whore, you know, so. Um, and yet, I think it was also done out of jealousy. Um, but, um, sorry, give me a second. <laughs> um, again, going back to the point of whether they saw themselves as black, I mean, there were instances when they had black servants or had white servants. Um, they they um, they were more in charge of their destiny, if you will, than people think. I mean, it's very easy to look at them as victims um, and taking advantage of the situation because of their skin color. But um, I think, in a way, they were kind of running things to put it colloquially. Um, in terms of uh, the author, she also drew me to the, to the text. Um, she did have some hardships in her life, which um, I was able to respect. She was married off very young, at 13, um, to a man 13 years her senior. Um, she, not all, all of her children made it to adulthood, so um, the ones that did, well, her, her daughter, her only daughter, passed away. She ended up 
raising her daughter's eight children, and in order to make ends meet, she ended up opening a school. Um, and what was interesting is that, um, I mean, she was bilingual. She could have written this in English, but she chose to write it in French as a way to teach her grandchildren and preserve the uh, French language, the French Creole language. Um, I think that's uh, all that I, that's for my introduction. I'm sorry, I'm nervous. So, I mean, if we weren't in this setting, it, it would be, you know, free going, but I'm nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Um, a few things I wanted to point out um, before we start. Um, this was after I sent it to the readers in chapter 16 in her letter to, uh, to Alfred. Um, in two was, uh, it was two words, so I put it, I corrected it to one word. Um, and also at the beginning of chapter 16, there was a word omission. Uh, mm -hmm. So it should have read on his desk or on the desk. I added on his desk. Um, and these are just minor things. I wasn't trying to misspell her name. Um, in the book, it's written with a capital D, but it's customary in French to write the D, like if it's if the last name is Dela, mm -hmm. uh, it, to write it with a lowercase mm -hmm. d. And for the sake of word switching between dictionaries, there's a space after the colon in mm -hmm. French, but I just left it in the title without the space. Um, I think that's it. Should we left that up on? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Alma, would you care to begin? Uh, okay. I've been in so, so many defenses <laughs> that I want you to know because you have not met me. And I want you to know that my approach in this situation is to always believe that, yes, I will be asking you questions. But we are your team, okay? Yes. We're part of your team. Uh, we want to make sure that when this comes out, it's almost perfect. Okay? And I would like to uh, congratulate your mentor. He has done, I think I told him yesterday, <laughs> he has done a wonderful job. Huh? Uh, this is a text which I enjoyed a lot. <laughs> and I was just telling uh, Wahida, that I believe I had uh, relatives in New Orleans because I couldn't find Simone down the islands. Mm -hmm. But my husband found a lot of them in New Orleans for them. So uh, it was like a new discovery. It made me feel very good. Okay. So I thank uh, my colleague here for calling me and inviting me to be part of your team. Um, I think that your decision or your mentor's decision to keep some French words is excellent because this is a very rich text in terms of language and culture. And there are some things that, in order to maintain that, the only way is to keep those French words in your translation. Yes? They, they add like a very, uh, a very important aspect hmm, of life, which is what you wanted to do. Um, the, uh, in your preface, uh, I found it very interesting because I work in sociolinguistics. And I, I read in you this desperation. <laughs> Why are they using these words? Uh, I think I talked to Ophelia about the word the uh, And I kept, you know, when I said it, in, uh, what I did was I said it in Spanish. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. okay. Like, you know, like creature. Okay. Yeah. And when I said it inside, una criatura, that to me is very beautiful. But then I said, that creature. Huh? Yeah. So I can, I can understand, I can understand your, your respect. So I talked to, uh, to her about that in uh, native speaker of French, and uh, she agreed with me. So maybe in a way that answers that uh, question that you had in you. And it was a very strong question because you could not take it. Why are they using that word? <laughs> um, there are also uh, some questions that you had concerning why is it that they uh, use uh, these other words to call these women, like, uh, like courtesan and 
it's all part of language development. It's also part of what the situation is. You know, in social linguistics, we look at language and the situation in which it's being used, and it's fine to change. In fact, we don't use the same register, you know, with others. And I think that it's part, it's part of also of a historical document that responds to a particular situation. Which, you know, you know, we, us women, we are still fighting the situation. But it's good that you pointed that out, okay? Um, another thing that I wanted to mention, uh, you talk about the N-word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In one of my, my classes, mm -hmm. social linguistics or bilingualism, uh, because I look at language from, in that situation, from a linguistic perspective. I was using this particular word in class and how it has been taken over by African Americans in the States to uh, address each other. And I think that they feel that they, it's a, like a, an empowerment situation, okay? And uh, I think you also have to see it. Uh, that way that sometimes we think that, why are they using that word? It's, and my student, for my students, it was very hard. I had one African-American student in my class. And uh, during the break, she came over. And she said to me, Dr. Simone, I know how, I know what's behind all this discussion. Please don't use that word again in class. I just cannot stand it. So I understand the emotion that comes out, you know, especially for those of you who are from the state. Yes. You know, here, I hear the word, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. okay? No one can insult me in English because it doesn't mean anything. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> now, I wanted to ask you something about, uh, we, we were talking about it. Uh, Octavia, uh, you know, you describe, or they, she's described as green, olive, blanc. Uh, then there is a moment when she, uh, her, uh, I think she's at the uh, theater, and suddenly they described that her skin was so white, huh? like snow. So did that catch your eye, or that particular? Where was that? I'll tell you. It's on page five. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's your, your translation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like uh, right in the middle of the page. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Line nine. nine. Uh, it means her long and large sleeves showed off her arms quite as snow. And because color is so important, it, it struck me. I mean, it's, I mean, you translate it because I checked the, you know, and that's exactly what it said. But in terms of what you're trying to, uh, to do with your text, you know, I thought you would have, I don't know, maybe explained it in the preface, not, maybe it's just a little thing that I should be concentrating on. But did you find that? No. No, no I think. It's, uh, I have it, it's page Yeah, it's what is now. Mm-hmm. Okay. The chiffon on her bodice, you know, covered her remarkable shoulder, Laura, and upon raising them, her long and large sleeves showed up her arms quite as snow. I know it says her arms, but I think I might have understood that to be the sleeves of what she was wearing. So the sleeves, maybe of the shirt mm. that she was wearing. Um, it's a good question. Well, it says she has gloves on yeah but where is the source where is that in the source text on page 79 
Yeah, they're talking about her arms. Well, there's a contradiction. Yeah, yeah they're in the text. Because she said there's brune. Yeah. Like, because remember, I called you brune. Mm -hmm. like, what do they mean by brune? Because mm -hmm. brune for us is brunette. Mm -hmm. It can't be your skin complexion. And then I said, oh, yeah, that's the uh, slavery uh, mentality. I think love. that in so Spanish she would be morena. Morena. morena so well, well she's, she's often, I, I think that one of the things that I believe you pointed out in your introduction, in your preface, was the contradictory ways that she was yeah. referred to. Yeah. And, um, because uh, she even, in the text, says that she's darker than and then most all her, She's darker than all her than skin. Is yeah. But then, so she was darker black, than the, but then she also is compared to um, a Spaniard quite often, yeah, with her olive skin. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And also darker than most quadrums. Exactly. The the blood blood is like, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to spend that. too much time on that. You know, I mean, the, the thing is that it depends on what you want to do with this, exactly. with the text. and. Mm -hmm. um, that's an inconsistency in the text itself. Yeah. In your mm -hmm. translation, you could play around with that. Um, you could say even something like, that evening um, made her arms look almost exactly. white as snow or it's something like that. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't Which, know. Which, by the way, I wanted to but comment, and I forgot to mention that. One of the things that struck me very positively is that sometimes you could have translated little what it said, but you just went around and you had the same idea and it was it was refreshing. Thank you. So I comment you know, for that. Thank you. Very good. Mm -hmm. Um same uh, that same uh, page right underneath <coughs> that you uh, translated her curls. Uh -huh. About being restrained, and I thought I, when I read it in French, what I interpreted was that that pin or whatever she had in her hair was used to raise the curls rather than restrain them. Mm -hmm. I, I used restrain because um, it was by law they either had to have their hair braided or covered, and so I was kind of playing along mm -hmm. with that notion of okay. I mean, they had, of, that they have to keep. That they have to restrain their hair. Rather than showing it off. Show okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I think actually, as a metaphor, it works better, too. Mm -hmm. um, we'll because see it as a the whole sure idea of restraint. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to not, you know, it's, you know, to not over exude their beauty. Yeah, and I. There's some typos here. I don't want to spend time. I want to give you my document, <laughs> and uh, you can, you know, from there you can look at like, some of the things that I, that I and, like words, you know, mission of words and things like that, and uh, or typos. And then when you start correcting, you forget and you leave a word. So I just want to get at it. There is a on that very page. There is a word missing. Uh, page five of the translation. What? Yeah. Page five of the translation. How do you keep them yeah. off of them? I must admit that I could hardly keep her. them off. Yeah, I, I put it here, I marked it here on my neck so that you would be able to see that. Um, okay. Okay, the, the next thing that I would like to talk about appears <coughs> on uh, page 11 where you talk about uh, education profonde, and you translated that as, as rigorous education. And what came to my mind was more than rigorous, was comprehensive. That in, it involved a lot of education. Mm -hmm. You know, not that it was strict. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we'll see how your mentor feels about think, it. And, uh, I think we, we varied the language because comprehensive shows up later. Uh, on the page mm -hmm. and talking about her education. Yeah, and I, I'm not, I'm just trying to think of usage, um, comp comprehensive education. I, I just came with a word, I just came up with a word comprehensive because it involves everything, but it just struck me. How about broad or, I, I don't know, you liberal? Can use broad, you can use broad, it's just that uh, 
it, it really went into uh, the kind of knowledge that uh, whatever they were talking about that this person went through. Okay. Maybe broad. Okay. I like that word. Mm -hmm. Because it, it involved a lot of uh, different aspects of knowledge, different fields of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, the next point is on page 21, and it has to do, is the last paragraph, the first sentence. It's page 21. Okay. It's just, a, I'm concerned. In the beautiful quadroom's yeah. home, there was no flower that could brighten its look. Uh, I looked again at the original, and I looked at it again. And I have this feeling that, wait a minute. Um, To me, uh, what was happening was that when they were describing her home, because she didn't like plants, she didn't like flowers, there was nothing there. So I think the kind of uh, feeling that they were trying to explain was that uh, there was nothing there, in, there was no flower, there was nothing that could like refresh Lujayar. You know, uh, la mirada, el mirar. It's in Spanish. The gaze in English is the gaze. I don't know. Well, but not so much its look. Not so much. The, because the Can look we, of what? The look of the home 91? or what? Ninety-one. Uh, I took it to understand the look of the home. Yes. Same. And I understood it as whoever went in. You know, it was. Uh, when you when you walked into the, that place, mm -hmm. the way that person was looking at it, you know, that there was no flower to to freshen up your your eyes or your yeah. to brighten that, that yeah, person's what I'm day. Saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, we, I remember I mean, talking I mean, about uh, that because it does make a difference okay. uh, in terms of what the, what the French said. Okay, so you might want to uh, look at it again. But the rest of that paragraph is wonderful. <laughs> it's excellent. Um, okay. Um, on page 27, the first paragraph, line four. Mm -hmm. that, that sentence, I think, really has to be redone. And it, it, there's you mean the one that we were talking about? Or yeah, this one? Um, I don't think actually. I think the um, the source text is very Spartan See. in that description, yes. and I think okay. that it doesn't work. You know, I don't think that <laughs> translating it literally works at all because no. I no. it doesn't. But anyway, thank you for pointing yeah. that out. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm on page. Uh, Twenty-seven. Okay. I think that that uh, was something at uh, saying Doctor uh, Pupatien, and uh, I don't know whether you did not, whether you omitted, you know, those words because you were going to repeat it again because in the text it's repeated. You know, which I'm, 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 it's, it's line. I'm, do we have the same pages? Yes. yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to confuse you. It's, uh, so it's page 27, and it's the top paragraph. Okay. One, two, three, line four. Okay. My days and my nights will be spent inventing truly damning tor torments, okay? And then 
for you and for those close to you so that it would be different. And I am telling you again, Alfred, be very, very afraid for those you love. Okay? So it's like a repetition in the two lines. And I don't know whether you omitted that in the first line because you didn't want that repetition. But I thought that you could mention it, uh, these damning torments for you and, and for those close to you. Yes. Uh, the next page, page twenty-eight, nine, six. David, as a native speaker of English, how do you feel? <laughs> about that line in which she says she just wanted to cause a scene huh? instead Where is of this? make a scene. Yeah. It's page 28, line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. She just, it's just by itself. She just wanted to cause a scene. With a quote again. How do you see it as a native speaker? Because in, in French it comes with the cause. Mm -hmm. Create a scene. Huh? Cause a scene, so create just, a scene, cause I, I, a scene. I just, I said she just wanted to make a scene. That's make a scene, I mean. create a scene, cause a scene. But it's that's it's contemporary. I mean, that's contemporary language. Okay. So you think that in English, saying cause a scene sounds natural cause. to me. Don't cause okay. a scene. Mm -hmm. you know? Cause. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why I was asking him. Okay. You know, as a native speaker, how did you feel about that? Okay. Um, but. Well, I think we're both native yeah. speakers. Um, <laughs> it's um, just that we sometimes we're, you know, mm -hmm. tainted. <laughs> Linguistic interference. Say, yeah. say, say. I just wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now, I have a question on that page. I'm not sure if we discussed this before, but cathedral is, is in French and italicized. It doesn't need to be italicized. It's, uh, but, but why? I'm not even. Oh. I'm not even sure why it should be in French. I didn't translate the names of the places, the bank, the mm -hmm. cathedral. Mm -hmm. um, the cathedral is. I think we might have discussed this at some point. I mean, the cathedral is a pretty. I mean, in in, in English, we would mm -hmm. we don't call it the Cathedral de Notre Dame. We mm -hmm. say the Cathedral of Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, at that time, in English, would we, would we have? Was it in italics? In English, you think? No, but I think no? I think that this would at the cathedral, just in English, lowercase. Yeah. Lowercase. Lowercase okay. at the cathedral. Yeah. Also, in this context, a religious term like cathedral, when you put it in italics, it also like stands out, mm -hmm. like it caught his attention. So. Um, okay, page, um, okay, page 35, the top, the first paragraph. That sometimes, even the French have problems with the pronouns. <laughs> You look at it and I said, come on, they couldn't they don't be he, it has to be she, that kind of thing. And I think at the top, because you're talking, I think it's when he returns. Uh, I don't have just returned, because on page 34 they're talking about uh, the, the house was filled with screen, and uh, she immediately dashed into the street and started running toward Dr. Verdier's house. Uh, and then you begin with Madame Gardier, who just had just returned, and it was Catherine who had to notify her of the misfortune. I was looking at the friend, and I, I couldn't figure out, uh, did, didn't that catch your attention in terms of the story? I thought it was the one who had just returned was uh, Dr. Uh, Gardier. Yeah. Just, just take a look at it. I mean, it's it's not the 
But You're on page. I'm 30, on page 35 at the 35. time. I had a, a little bit of a of a problem with uh, the characters there, uh, which I think in, later on it happened again. But you corrected the French when you translated that into English. Yeah. Um, that same page, one, two, three, four, five, six, line six. Make sure you take out that saw. Instead of uh, Noisette says she she had saw. Yeah, yeah, just just typos, you know. Yeah, and also that same page, uh, four lines from the bottom. Uh, I think there's something that in English we probably have to change, but for the for the time being, uh, lead in its past participle form, it's L-E-D. It's just that, that was changed. Yeah, that was changed too? Okay. But it, yeah. I think it will eventually be changed completely because it's, uh, it's, I think it's confused with read and read. No, the, you know, the way it's written because I find it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, on page 37, It's uh, the second paragraph that begins with, she promised 500 uh, piastres for her and her husband. That second line, <clears throat> when I read it in English, uh, and her husband, if they agree to relocate to one of Sir Miguel's many properties. Uh, I think of Sir followed by a last name. More than Sir followed by the first name. You know what I'm Talking about so yeah. I would I would I would prefer to keep the dawn which you did at the beginning. Okay. I don't know whether well, people are knighted and they uh, receive sir. Yeah, but dawn is not that has nothing to do with being knighted. No, I mean uh, I'm talking where she about Sir Miguel's many properties. But it, yeah, but it would have to be like a complete name, sir. Okay. Yeah, but it's not yeah. sir. It's like, I would yeah, I agree with you, it should yeah. be dawn. Yeah. So that it's uh, so you're called consistent, you know. Um, and I guess you did change that legitimate to illegitimate on page thirty-eight. At, from the from the top, it's one, two, three, four, five. The last word of line five on page thirty-eight. On the fifth line from the... The fifth line, the last word. The church's registers as the legitimate daughter, but in French it appears as illegitimate. When I read it, I said, legitimate? What? <laughs> it's just one, one of these things that... Because that's one of the things that stands out. That yes, she was uh, registered, but <laughs> that's a, that's the way they did it at the time. As the illegitimate child. And um, on page forty, as I have down here, I think again we find uh, towards the bottom we talk about Miguel, and just to be consistent, call him Don Miguel. Yeah. Every place that Miguel appears I in the source mm -hmm. is done. Okay. So it should. And then one, two. There, there are quite a few places. There, there are two. There are two places right here on this page. Yeah, the, but even the before. Third and the, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I have here line seven. Um. Again question to both native speakers. <laughs> um, that line seven, did you find it on the same page? The 40, where she says she attempted her little uh, coquetries on the young boys. Um, uh, I think
think in French it says essayer. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, but was it more than attempted that she tried her little on the young boy? I think we're, we might have different. You're on page 40 of the translation? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's 40, you know, it's the first paragraph. Yeah, it's a long paragraph. <laughs> Line. That's why I put, I went by lines. Okay. Line seven, I have nothing was refused to her. But I don't know. Okay. Well, do a search for coquetry. Yeah. Coquetry. Yeah. I will, yeah. Okay. okay, now it's that same page, line nine from the bottom. How about for that attempt again? Yeah, because it's yeah. not that's not tried out. Just another word, you know. Tried out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rather than attempted, like, but what's wrong with the trees? Nothing. Oh, okay. No, it's the <laughs> no, it was attempted. like a keyword. Oh, to find the line. Yeah. Uh, did you find that same on that same page from the bottom line nine? Uh, when you translate, uh, it was a pleasure for o Octavia, for Octavia in English, to excite the little beings' passions. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought maybe the, the little girls' passion rather than the little beings. It sounded a little bit awkward in English, but okay. it could also run parallel with this notion of. Of this creature, creature yes, yeah, with the notion of well, the creature would creature. be better. <coughs> yes. Okay. On that line. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're talking yeah, mm -hmm. about the goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, again, I can't remember it. Uh, line forty-two. Oh, I have to explain the pages. Um, line seven on page forty-two. Forty-two, line six. Uh, so, sorry, line six. You have uh, Leon's uh, name, and I thought that the hopes refer to their hopes. The crowd. We're talking about did this crowd think the young quadroon was going to appear and deliver a herring? At that moment, Leon's hopes were crushed. Uh, I think, I don't know, I, I interpreted that, you saw it as his hopes. I, I interpreted that as the crowd's hopes of seeing her. Remember when they're expecting her to show herself from the it's uh, mm -hmm. so this set full, so it would have had to have been. Oh, well, no, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, because they're talking like about the, the crowd. crowd. Mm -hmm. That's why I put instead of Nelson's hope, I put their hopes. Okay, I thought he was upset because. Um, you could interpret it both ways. Okay, yeah. because mm -hmm. he was, she wasn't standing mm -hmm. in the back anymore. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, maybe I found that saucer eyes fascinating. Uh, with saucer eyes full of audacity. Right before chapter 13, mm -hmm. that paragraph. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by saucer eyes? That was a word that they <laughs> were helping with. Right? Yes, but, okay. um, mm -hmm in terms of like bright eyes, mm -hmm. large bright eyes and full of audacity um, because this little boy is questioning his grandfather. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's like mm -hmm. how dare he question yes. his grandfather about yeah. his father's about this, former. Yeah. So. No, it, yeah, it refers mm -hmm. to, the, you know, with large eyes like, you know, how dare you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and right there in uh, chapter 13, that first line, they love loved Mary with all the forces of his soul. Yeah, that sounds more like Spanish, but toda la fuerza de su alma. I would say that in Spanish. 
in English, it may be like with all the strength of his soul. Or if we wanted to get rid of soul, say with all his might. I don't yeah. Know, but with all the strength of his. I think it's it's talking about how much he loved her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Spanish, I would definitely use words that spoke. I put something like every ounce of his soul. That's okay. good. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then on line uh, 56, line 3, that you put the, uh, where we're talking about comparatives and superlatives. So that third line to the obscenest. <laughs> to the most obscene, <laughs> I would say, but I don't know. It's just like more. It's not that it's wrong. You understand? It's, it it isn't wrong, but it it does sound strange. Okay. okay. Most obscene. Most I, I, <coughs> okay. 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 Um. And I think, again, this is a typo, but you can pick it up later. I'm not going to you know, bother. Um, I think that's it. The other things are correct. Okay. But it was a very good translation. You're dealing with, uh, like you said, it's a historical piece. And you have to take that into consideration in terms of the language. But I loved it when you did not do it literally, <laughs> when you just I don't know, you inverted it, and I put it down. I said, excellent. Okay. Excellent translation. Because the idea was there. Okay. I think the important thing is that you don't lose that idea, that thought that is being sent, that message. Okay. Thank so thank you. thank you. And thank you for inviting, inviting me, and uh, for the power I would have for inviting me to this. Uh, oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for your very, very cheeky, cheeky job. Like, I, I wish I could be like that one day. Well, <laughs> you know how I've been doing this for more than 50 years? Yeah. <laughs> I go to uh, places and I make corrections, <laughs> even on the menu. <laughs> As I told you, I'm very impressed with your job. And I was more focusing on the contresens. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you said in English. Uh, and then, like when there was like when the when the sense of it is like uh, twisted, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you say this in English? Contrasentido. Contrasentido. Contra I was going to say that in Spanish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So it's going to be hard for me to talk to you in English because I'm not used to that. But uh, I'm going to try. Because we are only speaking French. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Start talking to a francophone. But you're not speaking as a PhD in English. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, now, uh, some first contrasens. Contrasentido. Mm -hmm. uh, page. French group. Page 80. In French? Yeah, French, French. Last paragraph. Sur le jeune homme était orphelin. Il n'avait pas. Eighty. Just. Uh, 80. 80. Yeah. 80. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, the jeune homme était orphelin and n'avait pour parent qu'un qui, comme son tuteur, avait administré et sa So here it's say pas uh, to, like to tutor a child like for the beginning of the mm -hmm. classes in French English classes. C'est dans le sens de tutor légal. That's how I read it. Yeah. But it was legal. Legal, okay. tutor legal, but here is like two okay. things. Because uh, uh, he, uh, what page of the translation? Page 7. Okay. I don't think he who told him. Who taught The only parent he knew was an uncle. Uh, okay, yeah, in the yeah, sense that he was the custodian of his money. Of his, okay. Oh, you said this in English? There's another word, the legal word. We, tutor, I'll, 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 I'll find out. I'll find out for you right now. A lawyer too. No, I'm not a lawyer, but when I, yeah, when I know what is the translation? Taught, taught, and I use the correct term of taught, 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 here it's tutor. Oh, uh, okay, tutor legal guardian. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Can you use custodian in that sense over somebody's um, funds or their account? Um, no, no, legal guardian would be much more natural. Okay, and it's understood that that's um, 
custody and his money. Okay, that's what I I'm not sure why that can't be also be in numerical form because it's such a large number. But it, it, if it's, it's used less and less. Okay. Um, 
that's a stylistic issue. Uh, I, unless you have to really specify a chronology. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. um, it's like the subjunctive in English. That it is. It, it, it does exist. Yeah. But it's like it on its way out. Yeah. And there was a line there when you, you know, when you translate was fine. <clears throat> Well, a lot of times, I mean, it, this happens in Spanish too. Um, the passé composé uh -huh. um, would be a simple past in English. Exactly. Okay, so now I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Last. So the first, the first paragraph you read, you referred to a uh, pardon. C'est chapter six, seven. seven. And what page is that? Uh, page three. Page three. Mm -hmm. Chapter seven. You use lover once, only once, and then it's mistress, mistress, mistress. Yeah. Okay. Almost there. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Why? Oh, for on. Um, uh, mistress and lover. Oh, I see. Because she Ooh. mentioned like yes, lover she only once, see. and then it's <laughs> mistress, 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 mistress all the time. So it's like Bassini that you sometimes call it a prayer, sometimes you call it a prayer. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So as I mentioned in my preface, I kind of want to take the word back, mistress. Uh, and look at all of its definitions, and not only as really a woman, a woman. <laughs> not, not only as a woman who sleeps with a married uh -huh. man, if you will. So um, it wasn't a conscious decision, yeah. but in this is the use of that as a mistress of a house. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You're finished. Okay. Um, what I would um, just one last note would I be careful with I'm making some notes here but go through all of the large numbers okay. and put them in numerical form just to be consistent okay, <laughs> um, okay uh, well I guess it's time for everyone to leave the room so that yeah. we can discuss it. First of all, I want to say that it was um, a great pleasure to work with you. And uh, I think that what, what we came away with after talking about your translation was the fact that uh, you work with a difficult text um, that also has problems and is not, is in many cases kind of redundant in, in the language. Uh, and I think that you refine a lot of it. So anytime that you improve on a text, um, without veering too far away from it, of course, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that that's you know, very much to be said in your favor. But um, we've discussed this, and we think that you did an excellent job. So obviously, you um, deserve a sub-exception. Yay!